Okay, night scene, foliage, macro button pressed, and I still haven't cracked my can. Bugger. I'm definitely going to have to crack this can because I'm getting so parched. There we go. And come on, there we go. Yeah, some cans that you can with the ring pull, you, you, you're wagging it backwards and forth almost. They work with ages trying to get the bloody thing off. The other ones, they come off them. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, back to where we were, I suppose. Hopefully now it's in uh, focus. Yeah, and it gets quite sandy down there too, so maybe this time, because you didn't get it last time, you uh, We'll go even a little bit further and get down to this sandy bit down here. But it gets quite sandy down here. Okay. There's the old folks home and he's got this lovely grey quartz like sand here. And I always expected things to grow down here but they seldom ever do. I would have expected to have lots and lots of glids would have been washed down from up there and they'd be growing on all this stuff and no it never has happened you know so there you go you know you can have a, a really logical theory with all the bells and whistles and it just doesn't ever come to fruition I don't know if that's the take home, take home message and then running that idea back the other way in WA you got sand like this, that they call gutless sand and you have the most beautiful, most, most robust, fastest growing, most colourful CPs of anywhere in the world, you know? But why is that? Why is it so? How you can have a lovely looking sand like that, nothing growing on it over in WA, similar looking sand it's almost like they're bursting with growth and yet they call it gutless sand over there Amazing! As I said, it's a bit of a conundrum there, fellas. And I think until we actually crack, crack the conundrum, CPs is just not going to fall into line with it, all the other hobbies, you know, gerberas, hoyers, ferns and their allies, you know, whatever it is, gunner, or whatever you're growing, whatever your, your plant club is growing or is into, until we crack what the heck is going on in the mecca of the world, you know, the CP mecca of the world, uh, just hobby is not going to come to fruition and people have been and will be wasting their lives basically trying to grow these things bigger, better, faster, more colourful than they do in the wild and they just haven't got a hope in hell because science just, or bog science just hasn't caught up to, <laughs> up to, wow if science is bringing the future into the present faster <laughs> Someone's put some aerodite on our wheels, I reckon. But yeah, I just like the look of that. Look at that. It's absolutely... To me, I could have a backyard looking like that and I'd be very happy. <laughs> well, Ross is probably laughing. He said, oh, he loves, he loves me when I make phrases like that. I'd, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's going to actually take some of my phrases and actually you know, print them out in special copper plate uh, printing and, and frame them and... <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably sell them, I mean. I, I suppose he could. I, I'd have to sign them though to get sort of so you can get value for money, I suppose. But, <laughs> uh, maybe uh, Gideon can actually print out a list of all the um, the adaptions I've done for my son's idea of adding age to the end of a word, and oh, we, I'm sure we must be up to about two pages by now. So uh, yeah. How many new words can we coin and put into the English language? <laughs> uh, what are the ones that we make that are actually going to last, you know, for the next thousand years or something? But uh, it's a bit like this, you know, if we don't blow ourselves up, the glitch going to still be there in a thousand years' time because it's been there, you know, since time immemorial here. And yet, it's, it's the fastest sun during the world, it still will be in a thousand years time, I would think. Unless they do some genetic engineering or fancy hybridisation. And um, it's just so fast on a, a warmish day that no one's ever, ever really noticed it before. 
I was just very lucky that I'd been so um, primed by Phil Mann, the, you know, the uh, two weeks before. As I said, I couldn't actually go the following week after seeing Phil Mann and uh, to try and, you know, placate me, my dad brings home on the Friday following the visit to Phil Mann on the Sunday uh, this book, you know, and he says, uh, they're all sold out, but I managed to get you this copy from University of WA Press. And, uh, yeah, it's, that's a quote, basically. I've been quoting that for, well, since since it happened, you know. And years later I find out that the copy is actually a Lamb edition, so how the heck did he get a Lamb edition from University of WA Press? But, as they say, it's like that song, Hey Jude, there, there will be an answer. I know there will be an answer. And truth is fractal, so, you know, how, no matter how outlandish it sounds, when some investigative reporters actually go down and track down and, you know, do some really hard slog, it will all fit. You'll find out what the, what the story is. And it'll probably be even more amazing than you think it is, you know. It usually, always usually is. You think, oh, it's just a, you know, a, a to, the basic A to Z story, and suddenly you get all the, the, the B to Y's, you know. Starts coming in. Yeah, there okay. Anyway, over and out for this clip, I'll just take a wander back, I think. I might just have a quick squeeze down there for you, see what's out there, but that's about it.